Hello everybody and welcome to our class video about writing equations of special segments. Our learning goal for this video is that you'll be able to write the equation of the line that contains a special segment of a triangle. So we're building on what we did in the last video. Alright, so the best way to show you guys this is just to probably do a few examples, so let's go. As we write the equations of these lines, we're going to use our old friend, the point-slope form. Okay, so I've got that at the top of each slide for you guys to refer to. Okay, so in this problem, we're going to write the equation of the line containing the altitude to segment AB in triangle ABC with those points. So the first thing that makes sense to me to do is to draw the triangle. So let's do that. So I'm going to start at 5, 2, and I'm going to go connect to negative 3, negative 2, and then up to 1, 5, and then back to where I started. Okay, so this is A, that's B, and that's C. Now this is an important part. I'm drawing the altitude to AB. There's three possible altitudes in this triangle that I could draw. I'm drawing the one that goes towards AB. So that means I'd have to start at C. So I'm going to draw that in just approximately. Okay. I know it's going to make a right angle with AB. So something like that. Now, I just eyeballed it. It's an approximate. I can't use any feature of that altitude that I drew, like the slope or anything, because just by reading it off of the graph. Because I didn't draw it accurately. I didn't use a protractor or anything. So if I want to know the slope, then I'll have to figure it out by some other means. All right. Now, why do I say the equation of the line containing the altitude? Well, that's because the altitude itself is just a segment. But if I'm going to write the equation of a line in point-slope form, that's just a part of a much longer line that continues on indefinitely. Okay, so let's actually figure this out. So, in order to use point-slope form, I kind of need a point and I need a slope, right? Okay, so what point am I going to use when I'm writing the equation of this altitude? Well, I do know that the altitude goes through point C. So therefore, I can use vertex C as my point in point-slope form. So 1, 5. All right, so next question. What about the slope? What slope am I going to use for the altitude? I can't read it directly off the graph because I drew it approximately. But I do know that the slope of the altitude is perpendicular to AB. If that's the case, I can figure this out. So first, let me find the slope of AB. I can get this by reading it off the graph and using rise over run. So going from B over to A, reading from left to right, I would count my run being 8 and the rise being 4. So in that case, my slope, rise over run, is 4 over 8, which simplifies to 1 half. Keep in mind that you could also use the slope formula to figure this out. You guys remember that one? The slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So use whatever method you want, rise over run or that formula. I'll leave it up to you. Continuing on now, if I know the slope of AB is 1 half, then I know the perpendicular slope is the opposite reciprocal. Now you remember you flip the fraction and put it, change the sign? Okay, so that's negative 2 over 1 or just negative 2. Okay, so the slope is, of the altitude is negative 2. So in that case, I can write my equation now. So my, in point-slope form, I would have y minus 5, pulling it from here, equals the slope, negative 2, times quantity x minus 1, whoops, pulling it from here. 
All right? So there we go. We found the equation of one special segment. Let's look at another kind. In problem number two, we're writing the equation of the line containing the median to BC in triangle ABC. Okay, so once again, let's draw the triangle. So I'm going to connect 4, 6 4, 6. Come on, cooperate with me. Thank you. Okay, to negative 2, 1 and from there to 4, negative 7 way down there and back up to where I started. Okay? So here's A, here's B, here's C. All right, so I'm writing, finding the equation of the line containing the median 2BC. Again, that part is important. So what do I know about how to draw this? Well, I do know that, hmm, it has to intersect the midpoint, correct? So where's the midpoint of BC? Hmm. Well, you can figure out the midpoint visually by noting that on BC, we have that segment of 4 down and 3 over, and this one of 4 down and 3 over, meaning the midpoint is right there. So let's say that that's M. Okay? You could also verify that you found the correct point by using the midpoint formula. You guys remember that one? You add the x's divide by 2, add the y's divide by 2. Okay, so I've found the midpoint, and now I can draw in the median by connecting point A to the midpoint M. Okay, so now let's figure out the equation. So what point would I use? Well, I've actually got two choices. Okay, I can use the vertex A, which is at 4, 6, or I could use the midpoint M, which is at 1, negative 3. Both points are on the segment, so I could choose either one of them. Okay, what about the slope? Well, hmm, how would I figure out the slope of my median? Well, since I've drawn it on the graph, I could use rise over run. To prevent errors, to make sure, in case I drew it just slightly off, I'm going to count all the way from M to A. So, for the slope, I'm going to go a run of 3 and a rise of 9. Okay, so the slope of my median, which is AM, right, using rise over run, is 9 over 3. That simplifies to 3. Okay, that is the slope of my median. I don't have to do anything to it. So I'm ready to write the equation. Following point slope form, I've got, I'll use the point four six. Okay, y minus 6 equals the slope 3 times quantity x minus 4. If I use the other point, I could equally say y plus 3, remember minus and minus makes a plus, time, equals 3 times quantity x minus 1. Either one of those would be an acceptable answer. Okay, so we've got just one more. Let's write the equation of the line containing the perpendicular bisector to AC in that triangle. Alright, so let's draw the triangle. So let's go 1, 6 to negative 6, negative 2. From there to 5, 0. And from there back to where I started. Alright, there's A, there's B, there's C. I'm drawing the line of the perpendicular bisector to AC. Again, remember, that's important to figure out which direction you're going. So, if I'm going to bisect AC as it's a perpendicular bisector, it has to go through the midpoint. I can find that midpoint visually again 
by noting that this strip of going down 3 and over 2 and this one of down 3 and over 2 points me to the midpoint, which is right here. Okay, The perpendicular bisector has to be perpendicular to AC. So I'm going to draw what looks to be a right angle through that midpoint. Okay, now again, don't go by the slope of the perpendicular bisector you drew because we just estimated it. Okay, so what point am I going to use? The only point we know for sure is on that perpendicular bisector is that midpoint M. So I'm going to have to go off of that one. The coordinates of M are 3, 3. All right. Now, what slope am I going to use? Well, I do know that it ha this perpendicular bisector has to be perpendicular to AC. I already f you used the slope kind of to find the midpoint. I went down 3 and over 2. So that means the slope of AC is negative 3 over 2. So I know the perpendicular slope is the opposite reciprocal, which is 2 over 3. Okay, I have a point and a slope. So I can say y minus 3 equals the slope 2 thirds times x minus 3. All right, there you go. I will point out that if you were to simplify this, okay, you would have, let's see, if I distribute the two-thirds, I would have two-thirds x minus one, and that's y minus three. If I solve that for y, I would have y equals two-thirds x plus two. Hmm. Wait, did I do that right? Oh, this should be a 2 right here. Okay, so this would be plus 1. Okay, so that means my y-intercept should be 1. But the way I had drawn my perpendicular bisector did not have a y-intercept of 1. So, case in point, that's why you shouldn't go off of the segments that you just kind of eyeball. Okay, so that's enough. So I will see you guys in class, and there we have it.